Hi guys, it's Jill from Pink Garden and I am here to show you my 20 foot raised garden bed. This garden bed is so good. I don't have to bend over and it's made out of cinder blocks. So it is sustainable. It's not going anywhere. And we use these trellises that I supported with rebarb, or actually the guy did it. He supported them with rebarb, but it's so good. I'm gonna just get into the video, show you all how we made it. In the description box, you'll find everything that we used and how much it cost in total. All right guys, we just got cinder blocks delivered for my new garden bed. So guys, here is the area that we will be transforming. It is an area that I used to grow squash back here. It's behind our detached garage and it is 30 feet in length. I have the design in my head. I've written it down. So let's pray that this turns out good. Here we have, I believe we should have at least 150, if not more. Um, I think we calculated a few extra just in case something breaks. Um, always try to calculate a few extra. So I mapped out and calculated how many we needed for the raised garden bed. And, um, but yeah, like I said, we normally calculate out a few extra just in case anything breaks. So guys, what we're gonna do now is we're going to level out this area, come finish moving, moving the little limestone chips out and leveling out all of this thick clay soil all the way down so 20 feet down we have to dig only really about two to three inches we're going to dig down and then add the sand and the cinder blocks all right so what we're doing right now is seeing where the first two cinder blocks will sit and seeing how far down we want to dig. And then we will remove these now that we know that that is level. We will remove these, continue to dig out the clay. And you see it is very thick and dense. Georgia clay. It don't play, baby, it's Georgia clay. What are you doing? I'm, I'm sitting down. Make sure y'all compact this in. Always compact. It helps you to make sure it's nice and level. Keep it right, keep it tight. Show me in the hot tub tonight. <laughs> this will work. <laughs> so is it level? Almost level. Mm -hmm. You have to look right here. All right, guys, it's coming along. It's coming along. Okay, guys, it's coming along. We got a few feet done. Stay tuned.
All right, guys, that is it for day one. Y'all already know, yes, these jokers are in the hot tub, yeah? Y'all tired? You tired? You are? That shows you how long this hot tub is. He's 6'4", and he can stretch out. Hey guys, I literally have not been able to do anything because of that one. Let's catch the babies. <laughs> <laughs> and she's laughing. I can't do anything. If I take, you know, like some of y'all that have like a little puppy and when you move, the puppy moves with you. If I move, if I go, I can't go to the bathroom. I can't go anywhere. So this is my mother. She has Alzheimer's. And and God bless anyone who does caregiving, even on a part-time basis or just the holidays or weekends or anything, because it is very difficult. Um hobby. It, <laughs> it's just a hobby. <laughs> It's hard to understand, it's hard to comprehend, it's hard to provide the care. And it's it's taxing. Um, the memory is not there, long-term, short-term, for her, none of it. And um, literally every five seconds almost, it's, it feels like, it's probably every five minutes, but it feels like every five seconds she will ask the same thing over and over. So, or follow you, or you can't move, and then you're afraid that she's going to trip and that kind of thing, but, um, you know, give her a little task, like things she can't really mess up, like gardening, um, you know, and let her pull mm -hmm. some weeds or plant something, you know. So, that's what we're doing. So, it's hard, but we get through it. We get through it. So, I'm um, finishing up planting, uh, some succession planting, Swiss chard, um, some nasturgeon. I have nasturgeon growing out in the garden, but I, I want to do some more. And, mm -hmm. oh, I want to show you guys the progress that we're making on the long um garden bed uh we started painting that today and so let me show you that what are you doing little boy i'm just hanging out i've, I've had yeah i've had to keep an eye on my grandma I've, I've so you grandma out. sitting yeah. so grandma don't babysit you you baby you the babysitter yeah i know it sucks you're the grandma sitter yeah it sucks yeah, yeah, I have to keep her from going in there. I have to keep her from going in the house. I have to keep her from going outside. Because she hurt herself. Well, we don't her want her to hurt herself, right? No. Right? Okay. No. All right. Well, we thank you. Thank you, AJ. Appreciate Ooh. it. All right. So here is the status on this raised bed. This 
cinder block raised bed. We are three quarters of the way. Well, I can't really say three quarters of the way, halfway done because I still have to fill it. We are going to go pick up right now the caps that are going to sit on top. And I need to clean up these edges in here where the wood is. Clean up the wood, put a stain on the wood. It's been a couple of years since I've stained that wood. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna do another coat of black. Once I put the caps on, I determine and paint the caps, then we'll determine if we're gonna uh, do another coat. I'm gonna see how it weathers in the sun. But I can see some light spots, so I may need to go back through and do another coat. Then I'm going to fill it. And that is about it. We're gonna fill it and plant. So back here through the woods, we had, can't really see it, but there's a mound back there. And there's a big weed growing on top of it. But there's a big mound of soil that we had delivered um, months ago. And we used it to fill um, some other beds. And it started, it was way before spring. Um, actually, it was back in the fall. So some things have started growing on it. But I can dig underneath and get some of that soil. And that's what we're going to use to fill that giant cylinder bed. Okay, so we are going to fill the bed, like I said, with that soil on the bottom. Then I bought some manure and some other topsoils that I will use once. In, I'm going to do like a lasagna layering effect and um, mulch and different things, leaves. We have, you see, we have tons of pine straw around here from all the trees. And it's just going to be a bunch of organic matter because that's a huge bed. It's a 20 foot bed and it's three feet high. So I have all kinds of things that I'm going to fill that with of organic matter. And then I have some really good topsoil that's very expensive topsoil that is going to go on top. That is the Fox Farm uh, topsoil. I'm gonna to put that on top and that's gonna be the, the top layer. And also some um, vermiculite, cocoa core, all of that good stuff. I'm gonna do a good mixture of all of that and that is what is gonna be that very top layer. And it's gonna be about four to six inches of layer across that 20 foot uh, bed so it's gonna be some work but we're gonna get it done okay guys these are the caps that will go on the top and finish off with a nice solid edge on the cinder blocks all right guys so I know I'm looking quite cute today <laughs> yeah I'm looking a mess today as usual when I'm outdoors but we are putting on the caps on this raised cinder block garden bed. And I'm gonna show you what we're using in case you ever wanna do this. So some people choose to use the, the cinder blocks and maybe fill them in with dirt, um, leave the holes exposed, but I'm choosing to use some caps, some uh, concrete caps on the top to seal it up and make it a little more aesthetically pleasing. And I have ordered some black metal trellises, four trellises. The trellises, um, I'll show you when they come in, but the trellises are 72 inches tall and I believe 24 inches, which is two feet wide. So six feet high and and two feet wide. I've ordered four of them. This raised garden bed. 
the back of our detached garage is actually 30 feet wide and so i'm only going 20 feet in width of the garden of the garage because we do have so we do have several of these uh, termite baits down and that's why I'm only going, you know, a certain width with the garden bed. And so if you're wondering the, the price for everything, I will give you all that information um, once we've completed everything from the cinder blocks, delivery, and you know, that's if you're choosing to, you might want to go pick them up yourself. We had them delivered. Um, we do get a veteran discount on any materials that we purchase. And I believe we got these from Home Depot. Uh, also down to the cinder block or concrete glue that we're using and the plants, the paint, I will break it all down. The trellises, I'm gonna get it all to y'all. Don't worry, I'm gonna break it all down. I'm gonna tell it to you and then I'm gonna break it all down, put it on screen, and then I will also put it in the description box below. Not um, in this video, I'll put what we have so far, what we've done up to this point, I will put that in this video and then I will do a whole reveal video once we're completely planted out all right y'all don't have to worry i'm not like some you know and no shade no shade but um i'm gonna give y'all all the information if you go to somewhere else to another channel and they don't give you the info baby i'm gonna give you all the info so whether you want it or not i'm going to give you the info so don't worry <laughs> So this is what we're using to apply the concrete glue. And you see, it's a mess. It got all over. And I mean, it got all over my gloves. It's very sticky. It's a landscape. Um, and this uh, glue is for bonding blocks, stone, and you can use it for timber. So you can use it on wood, stone. It's just a good all around glue and adhesive and this is the apparatus that you can use it's like a caulking gun basically all right these are the four inch cinder block caps so as you see these are solid on top and bottom let me show you i'm gonna put you guys right here while i pick up one so you can see it's totally solid this thing is solid. This is four inches here. This is the 15 inches that completely covers one cinder block and is completely solid all the way around. You can seal it like this or you can paint it, choose a color, paint it, stain it, whatever you want to do to um, concrete. It's, ba it's made out of concrete, so. And you can also, I think they had a two inch version. The two inch was more in price than the four inch. Uh, the four inch was $2 and some change. I'll put that uh, exact amount in and where we got them from. But the two inch would cost more than the four inch. So we went with the thicker one, why not? Look, it's stuck on my, sh it's stuck on my boot. It's stuck on my boot. <sighs> That's the adhesive. Stuck, stuck the thing to my boot. All right, all the caps are in place. We are ready to start filling. I'm going to actually fill it before we paint the caps black because it'll just make them all nasty and dirty and we'll have to paint it all over again. So I want to go ahead and fill it first, <clears throat> then we'll paint it. It's really no right or wrong way to do it. It's just really about your personal preference. 
So I will tell you this though, I'm going to paint the caps on the inside as well because you will see that if I don't paint it, you'll see that it's the gray color. So I want it all black. Um, the dirt will come up to this first cinder block. So I have to cut that off to clean that up a little bit for when we paint it. But the little glue spillage there, cut that out. Prior to painting. But other than that, yeah, we're ready, ready to paint. Look at the clouds coming in. It's not supposed to rain, but I think it's gonna rain. You know, Georgia in the summer, you'll get that. It'll say no rain in the forecast. Then it'll rain for like 10 minutes. Then the sun come back out in the middle of the evening. <laughs> in the evening, the sun will come out bright, bright, bright. Oh. You ever see that? The fella is sitting down it's hard to find good help. Look at that, guys. We're getting there. We're getting there. I've got about 10 inches more to fill. I found this block of cocoa core pith in the shed and I'm going to soak this down and add it to the garden bed. I don't know if you can tell, but it's already a quarter of the height that it was when I originally put it in here. It's soaking it up fast. You can literally see how it's drawing the water in and then this area right in the middle is still dry. Okay guys, to aerate the soil, I'm going in now with some perlite. I'm gonna do some perlite some vermiculite and um, then I'm going to do worm castings um, also to aerate it you know we we um, soaked up this cocoa core so that's going to go in as well and then I have an all purpose fertilizer from Fox Farm and then a whole slew of Fox Farm soils. And I'm gonna put in some black cow as well. Now we just mix it. Okay guys, so what we're going to do now is to use some rebar, but we're going to, the guy's gonna cut the rebar. I guess he has it marked right here is how much he needs to cut and we're going to use that to support the trellises
This is my number one weeding tool right here. Did you call it manual labor, Adrian? Yeah, yeah shouldn't you be helping me, by the way? Should you be helping me? Maybe, maybe. I'm supervising. Yeah, you could supervise me while also helping me. That would oh. be easy. Maybe. Go, go. All right, let's see. Is it going to fit? Just don't fall. <laughs> All right. Okay, guys, the trellises are all in. So again, we put rebar into each of the ends. So they went straight in um, to each end of the trellis. So here, in this end, and this end, on the inside, a hollow, so we were able to put rebarb. And the rebarb was eight feet long, and we had to cut it, and then pound it into the ground. Um, it actually went literally into the ground, one foot into the ground. So past, so back here, actually passed past this on um, the bottom of the bed and into the ground itself he pounded it one foot into the ground to help secure them so they shouldn't go anywhere so also the first plants have gone in so these are cucumbers and they are the first ones to go in exciting all right guys so the trellises are in they are supported with rebarb and all that's left to do now is to plant so exciting i meant to have it done this morning but it rained off and on all day and the sun finally came out it was so dark it looked like night it was so dark all day just dark so I couldn't get out to plant so my seedlings are ready and let's get to it and I have some Oyas that I'm going to install so a friends over at Grow Oya thank you so much they sent over um, a few Oyas for me and I am going to use those to water these plants. So if you've never used a grow oya before, let me show you what it looks like. I think this is the large. This is the big guy. <laughs> this is the biggest one. They come in small, medium, and large. And basically what it is is a terracotta pot. And terracotta, as you know, is porous. So water can actually, when you feel this, the water seep, can seep out. It's slow, but it can seep out. And the roots, when you bury it into the ground, the roots of a plant basically gravitate towards where that water source is coming from. And so you fill it here, you put it in the ground, you fill it, and forget about it basically. Not too long though. <laughs> You do need to check it every week. I usually check mine every week, but they last, the water lasts in there for a good week to two weeks in the heat of the summer. And then in the wintertime, um, I do take it out if there's going to be a freeze, if there's a freeze warning. But in the fall and spring, I mean, it'll go for almost a month when it's not that hot outside. So, 
conserves water, your plants love it. This is great for people who are only doing container gardening, especially, and um, you travel a lot, you don't have to worry. You don't even have to deal with the automatic timers and irrigation soaker holes and all the other stuff that I have. This is like so good. And this is the other thing about this. Yes, you can DIY a Oya, but not everybody gonna do a DIY. Some of y'all not gonna do a DIY. Let's be real. So they made something for y'all that don't want to DIY your stuff. And it's cute. Look how cute. I love it. It's like genie bottle, isn't it? <laughs> so cute. All right, let me get to planting. I was looking down in the box and I didn't know that they sent me a dibber. <laughs> and if y'all know me, I can lose some tools. And so I have a brand new dibber that's somewhere, but I don't know where it is. So I'm so happy to have found this in the box. Thank y'all girl Oya, <laughs> cause I have no idea where my dibber is. Let me get to planting. Okay guys, so here I have some lemon cucumber, English cucumber, nasturtions, um, marigolds, and some bitter melon. So all of these I'm going to plant. So before it started raining, I did plant three cucumber plants. It was actually one, one pot, but had three plants in it. So you can separate that out if you have that and you'll see i'll have some more that are like that because i plant more than one seed i'll sow more than one seed just so that in case you um your, your seeds don't you know germinate you always want to plant more than one but then you can separate them and so i have basil throughout you can see i have i haven't planted them yet but i'm just putting them in place so I have basil because I want to do some companion planting. You always want a companion plant to deter pests. So I'm using basil and I think I'm going to get some thyme. And then I have the nasturtions as well that I'm going to pop on the ends. All right, let's get started.
Okay, guys, so I have different types of things that I use to trellis vegetables. and But the thing about it is cucumbers, look at this. Let me show you the cucumbers. They will vine themselves. So I don't know if you can see. You know, they get these little curlies and they will just curl themselves and they can vine themselves. But if you find that they don't or it's not enough support, I have different things. I have these. It rained in my bucket. Look at this. It rained in the bucket. It's all soggy. Um, but I have these cute little garden friends that you can use. And you just wrap them around your veg and around whatever pole or trellis you have. And twist it and it will support them. Those are really cute. If you have kids, they love using these to help in the garden. Then I have this plastic twine and I like using this because it's not hard on the plant and tear it or break it. So it's very gentle. I got these little clips from Dollar Tree. I'm sure you can get them on Amazon too, but I got them for $1.25 at, at Dollar Tree and they come in uh, different sizes. I think it's three different sizes that they come in. Here's a pack that wasn't opened. Yeah, so it's like three different sizes, small, medium, and large. And you literally just clip it onto your plant, onto the trellis, like this, like so. And the last thing that I have, I don't know what I do with it. Hold on. Oh, here it is are these twist ties. I don't really like using these because it has a wire in the middle and it can, um, and they're really thin and the ends are kind of can be a little sharp for uh, plants. So if it's a plant that's sturdy, like a sunflower and I need to put it to a pole, then I will use these. That can take it, but something delicate like a cucumber, I don't like to use these, but I mean, if you have to, you have to. So, those are some of the things that I use for trellising and support. Um, you can always use twine as well. Um, I use that also. So, depends on what you like to use. And you can see here how the cucumbers most melons and cucumbers, they will trellis themselves. Look at that. It just latched right on. Guys, guess what I forgot? Fertilizer. Why didn't y'all remind me? I forgot the fertilizer. Okay, let me fertilize and we're done. I don't need to water. Only thing I need to do is put water in the Oyas because it rained and it's going to rain again. So I don't need to fertilize uh, to water, but I need to fertilize. All right, guys, so that does it for me. We are done with this bed. You know, I'm probably gonna add some, a few more things to it, but for the most part, it's done. I'm going to now let these little cucumbers and what else I have, bitter melon and the herbs grow. I've left them enough space to grow and I will update you guys on how they're doing. So I wanna thank you if you made it this far. Um, if you have any questions on the build of this concrete uh, cinder block bed, let me know. I will put the measurements, all the dimensions, how many bricks we use, um, the number of caps that we use on top, 
um, paint, whatever you want to know, I'll uh, link it, everything in below in the description box, and I'll put all of that information in there. So I'll also list the plants that um, I planted, and I grew everything pretty much from seed. I think there was one plant that I actually purchased, but everything else pretty much came from seed. If you have interest in the seeds, let me know. But that is it. I am so excited for this bed. The trellises. I really wanted to put the trellises, you know, um, to mound them onto the siding. However, I just don't think it's a good idea to put them onto the siding. So, never know if you're going to sell your house. <laughs> so... I don't want to start drilling holes and things into the site, so uh, I'm not doing that. So that's why we put them and we reinforce them with rebar. So it came out pretty good. Let me know what y'all think. Leave me a comment. Let me know. Until the next time, you guys. Thanks for watching.